Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. There is a new update for my fellow Romanians, so you know how we have to pay VAT twice because our postal service did not process the import of our small packages in the IOSS system. They just announced that their system is now ready to process these packages and validate the IOSS numbers, so we shouldn't be charged twice anymore. That's some good news, but we'll see how that goes in practice. So let's start this mailbag uh, with a tiny heatsink kit, which was nicely packaged in this bag. It even comes with the required screws, uh, standoffs, uh, a silicon pad, and a small one-time use screwdriver, which doesn't seem like a good idea in this time and age, just because of the waste uh, these kinds of things generate. I mean, we all have a screwdriver set, right? It's not like a non-technical user is going to be ordering a CM4 heatsink and find out that he doesn't have the uh, required screwdriver to install it. So this heatsink is for a Raspberry Pi CM4. I plan to develop a new project based on a CM4 module. However, currently they seem to be out of stock pretty much everywhere, uh, with the exception of the higher spec models with lots of flash and RAM, which obviously cost more and people are reluctant to order them. I did, however, get this heatsink because at some point I am going to get a CM4 and due to their smaller size, uh, they have even less uh, cooling capability in the PCB itself uh, when compared to a regular Raspberry Pi 4. So you really need a heatsink to avoid throttling the CPU early on. The sponsor of this video, Altium Designer, is one of the most advanced PCB design softwares on the market. Altium has some pretty advanced features which enable collaboration among multiple team members, so there is no wonder they are a popular choice in the professional PCB design world. Check out the link placed in the description below to sign up for a free trial of Altium. Next up, I got another one of these uh, small panel mount PIR sensors. And the circuitry inside these is very simple, something like a capacitor divider to provide power to the PIR sensor. Uh, and then uh, the output from the PIR is used to trigger a triac. But my goal here is to use one of these as a switch input to a smart relay flashed with Tesmota. So I would end up with a motion activated relay that I could also use to control a light. But at the same time have the smarts to control it over MQTT and add other factors into the mix like the ambient light level or varying the on time. Stuff like that that I can build into my home automation service. I know it's not an ideal solution, I should probably just use a separate Zigbee PIR sensor and a separate relay for control, or maybe just design my all-in-one mains power DSP32 plus PIR plus relay, which I might do at some point, but until then you'll find the link for all of these products shown in the video description below. Next up, I got a couple of uh, different models of these clips or mini carabiners and this one has a parachute cord style lanyard with a uh, small uh, clip on the end uh, while this green one has the uh, belt attachment type or velcro uh, belt. So you would carry this on a belt and maybe clip some uh, accessories that you need to carry around these can be handy for those that go camping or hiking in the wild and they do cost so much less when getting them from aliexpress as opposed to the local sports or camping shops you can probably get three or four of these for the cost of getting one locally in a previous mailbag i showed that large din rail type enclosure and now i also got its smaller brother which is probably half the size and can be suited for uh smaller projects like you can build some ESP32 automation type board that would fit inside the smaller enclosure and clip it to a, a DIN rail. It's the same average quality plastic. Uh, they claim it's fire retardant. I'm not sure I haven't checked that but generally it, it does get the job done as an enclosure especially when you consider the low cost of these units. I also ordered this uh, similar uh, DIN rail mounting style enclosure, but this is from a different seller, one that specializes in uh, enclosures on AliExpress. And let me tell you that this one just feels like it's higher quality. The plastic feels a little more flexible. Uh, this one feels a bit more brittle. And there's greater attention to detail here, like they have these metal threaded inserts for the screws. Uh, there seems to be a higher 
uh, quality finish on the mold uh, on this part so you can basically tell immediately that this enclosure is higher quality however this comes at a cost and i probably paid something like two and a half times the cost of the uh, cheaper enclosure for this one uh, but i thought this would be nice to have for a future project it has this smoked transparent lid it has some uh, ventilation holes on the sides so you might see this one being used in a future project of mine Oh, and the seller of this uh, seems to provide better drawings and documentation for their enclosures and same as always links for all of these will be in the description below the video if you've worked with any type of dremel tool or similar hand tool with a small chuck you've probably used one of these keys that comes with the tool and if you're like me you're probably you've probably lost uh, one of these at some point hence why i ordered a couple of these inexpensive replacements from uh, aliexpress and in a pinch you can get in there and use a pair of pliers to secure or release the bit but that's going to mess up the tool so i try to avoid doing that next up i figured i would uh, give one of these tools a try you know how sometimes you just need to drill a hole in your uh, apartment wall and you really don't want to be making a big mess you try to use the vacuum while drilling at the same time and i've done that it does the trick depending on how you position the vacuum but i wanted something that i could more easily use for the same task because if you're alone it can be quite difficult to hold the vacuum hose with one hand and drilling precisely with the other hand and this is one of those tools that supposed to go on your drill bit and it, it should collect the dust inside this chamber and this one in particular takes four to ten millimeter drill bits which covers my needs and I suppose you still need to use uh, one hand to keep this stuck to the wall while you're drilling with your other hand and I'm not sure how effective this is in practice but for the cost I figured it's worth a try let me know in the comments uh, if you've used one of these and uh, if it helps at all next up I got myself a couple of these OV2640 CMOS cameras and I have two different lenses in here uh, this one is with a 66 degrees field of view this other one is a 160 degrees so quite a wide lens effect on this and uh, but we'll probably get like a fisheye uh, distortion with this camera but that's fine uh, these are compatible with the ESP32 cam boards and I have a couple of those coming my way as well the idea is to try and build an electricity or water meter reading system that would help me read my meters more easily for example my water meter is kind of hard to access and i would prefer to install such an automatic uh, system that would allow me to read it from a, a distance more easily the only issue with that is that currently published projects that i've seen seem to rely on a continuous 5 volt power supply and they continuously run the sp32 uh, some do some uh, image recognition because they have that continuous power uh, but I would prefer if the system would be battery powered and would only wake up like once a week to take a, just a simple picture and save it somewhere uh, on my local network and then go back to sleep for another week that way I think I could run for months on an 18650 battery as long as the sleep current is very small so maybe I'll design something like that soon just let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in seeing something like that designed and built on this channel this is a very interesting type of wire that is used in the phone repair industry and it is sometimes called molybdenum wire or cutting wire or diamond wire and I'm not really sure of its true composition but if molybdenum is in any way expensive or hard to get I doubt this is really made from molybdenum just because it costs under two dollars to get one of these rolls shipped to your door but one thing is certain this is very useful if you are trying to separate layers on a modern gadget screen take for example a cracked glass screen protector or a cracked glass on an LCD panel you will uh, run this very thin and and really strong wire between the layers and you can separate them that way instead of just going in with the tweezers and removing the in individual uh, shards of glass from from the screen at least in theory i'm not sure how well that goes in practice but i did get a roll of this because i'm doing some operations on my uh, uh, old but trusty iphone 8 plus to replace its battery yep it's uh, four years old and it's uh, finally started to to give and the screen protector uh, it's also uh, cracked on on the side so i thought i'd give this a try i have the uh, 0.06 millimeters thickness 
uh, wire here and uh, there should be 100 meters in here let me know in the comments below if you've used something like this and how did it go does it really work like they show in the presentation uh, pictures or videos and the last item in today's video is this 50 ohm inline termination resistor with BNC connectors and this is rated from DC up to 1 gigahertz up to 1 watt and up to 10 volts DC and I guess the model number is P57 and I've got to say the build quality although it's not like top-notch it does feel very decent and certainly exceeds my expectations as you may know I do have the good old uh, Rigel uh, DS1054Z scope here which doesn't have a 50 ohm input setting uh, that's pretty common on uh, entry-level oscilloscopes but now that I also got the uh, Unity signal gen I kind of want to match the impedance of these two so the only way to do that is to use one of these inline termination resistors on the scope side it's a cheap and effective way of achieving that 50 ohm end-to-end -end impedance uh, if you're doing some measurements same as always links for all of the products shown in this video will be placed in the description below so do check them out that was all for today. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month or you can simply hit that like button uh, which is free and really helps. I'll be seeing you next week.